Uh, and it's a uh, it's a pleasure to be here with you this evening. Um, I um, would like to take this opportunity to thank Barbara for inviting me to be part of this monumental celebration. And um, I hope that uh, we will have a good time discussing art. All right. It's uh, also one thing that I want to add is that uh, I was uh, very happy when Barbara sent me the invite. The title of the show, uh, I realized that uh, she had touched something that is really dear to me, which is uh, the relevancy of my work. And that's uh, one thing uh, I really appreciate it. And thank you, Barbara. Thank you. <laughs> oh, and I forgot to say, Mark is a local artist. He lives in Maplewood. So yeah. we're supporting a local artist here. <laughs> And uh, one more thing I want to say about my work. It's like uh, before uh, we dive into, uh, into the artwork, uh, let me give you a little uh, insight into um, how my uh, creative process, insight into my creative process. First of all, uh, I always thought of an idea, all right, based on current or historical events. I, uh, I draw, I, uh, I sketch, I collect pictures, magazines, from all over and then um, put them together as if I were making a collage, all right? And uh, then um, when I put everything on, uh, on canvas, I, uh, this is when I start adding other elements such as color, shape, uh, uh, composition. That's when I get into these elements. And uh, do I always um, follow the script or the uh, premise that I start with? No, uh, no. Most of the time I deviate. Uh, I, uh, I let the work take, the, take its course. And uh, when uh, the work start talking to when the work start talking to me, uh, it's telling me to stop. It's enough. That's when I stop. And uh, lately, one thing that I stopped doing is uh, signing my work. Uh, what I do, I do, I still say I do sign, but I don't sign it up front. I sign it in the back because uh, uh, I'm uh, observe when I observe people looking at artwork, one thing that they always do, they always go to look for the artist's name. And I find that a little bit uh, distracting in my view. I find it distracting. I say, let, let the people deal with the work. And then the name, my name is, um, comes afterward. I always, I sign my work in the back. Even if you go to a gallery, you see my work uh, in the show, you'll say, oh, Mark, you don't sign your work. Yes, I do sign my work, but I sign it in the back. All right. Thank you, Barbara. Okay. I'm going to share my screen and we will get into uh, just a more of the, let's see, share screen. Sorry, let's do a slideshow. Slideshow. Sorry, I'm admitting people and trying to get the slideshow going at the same time. Okay, so I should probably should have had this up all along. <laughs> the socially relevant art of Mark A. Gaston. So this is the first work of art. And we're going to invite people. And I guess the best way to do this since now I can't see people, is to maybe put in the chat, raise your hand in the chat so that I can see um, if people want to share the thoughts and ideas that come to mind when you see this picture. Um, I just need to find the chat, where'd it go? Aha. Uh -huh. Does anybody want to start? What, what comes to mind when you see this picture? It's a little abstract and that's the beauty of it. Barbara, can I add something? Can I add something quick? Sure. There is, um, uh, the great thing about art is that uh, there is uh, no right or wrong interpretation. All right. Exactly. It's all up to you. It's all up to, it's, uh, uh, it's how you feel about the work. And everything, I mean, whatever you say, whatever you say, whatever you feel, whatever you think, it's good with your sharing thoughts. That's all. Okay, I see Pierre. Um, yes. Uh, yeah, yes, uh, yeah. Uh, for, for me, that piece, uh, I guess the first that strikes me actually is, is the book. Uh, like the book, 
with that uh, uh, kind of weight inside it, like something that is like tied. Uh, mm -hmm. Usually, uh, there there are not that many pieces of uh, of, of art that I see a painting, or there is actually a picture of a book. The book is uh, although uh, so this the symbolic part to me uh, that struck me is that uh, is how. Uh, to me, like knowledge and, uh, and, and sometimes propaganda, like that books, uh, kind of, uh, actually, uh, uh, sometimes is part of oppressing people. Yeah. So that's, that, that's, that, that's what actually, uh, that evoke in me when I, when I see, when I see, when I see that picture of, uh, okay. you know, uh, intellectual work that I really use, uh, instead of actually to enlighten people, but really to confuse and, and to uh, uh, subjugate people. Ah, okay, that's very really interesting. Mm -hmm. um, um, hello? Yes. Yes. Yeah, sorry, I, I don't have the capability of raising my hands, but just to follow up, um, I did see like, uh, you know, there's a biblical context as well, you can see within the eye, observing the cross and maybe the book mm -hmm. could be symbolic for a Bible as well. Um, and also the shoe definitely stands out to me. I don't really get the content 100%, but um, definitely sticks out to me as well. Mm. There's so many things seem to be going on in this picture. Thank you. Your name for some reason didn't change. It said Mark Gaston. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's, that's my dad. Sorry. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> Does anybody else have something to share? You can just start Hi. talking. Hello, can you hear me? Hi, yes, Leon. Yes, uh, just just one question here. Um, under the cross, is that is that a, a bullet? You know, I see the cross. I see the grass. I'm trying to make out what that is. I can't tell. That's an eight. That's a drum. Okay. Drum okay. Bullets. There we go. All right. Well, it's Got a, it. a, a drum or a bullet. That's a drum. A, a drum. drum. That's what I thought it was. Okay. okay. It's small. Again. Thank you. It's not. <laughs> oh, I made it big. Now I can't make it small. <laughs> Wait, let me see what's going on here. Uh, maybe I'll go back up. Hmm. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> I will know not to do that again. Um, any other thoughts? I think that, yeah, this is very interesting. So we have the drum and juxtaposed with the cross. Um, does that conjure any, any um, views? Yes, Delvin, Renault, you can just go ahead and speak. Hi, um, I'm, I'm looking at the, the cross and where it's placed over the, uh, the woman's eye. And I think it shows how, uh, in some cases, religion can uh, can blind us or skew mm -hmm. our our judgment. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's an interesting point. And then we have the drum. I'm sort of trying to put it back to normal size. Um, anybody else want to share? Uh, this is Natasha. I had a question. I write it on the uh, on the chat, but it's in your said. I wonder what is the purpose of the book. So nice work, Mark. It's very nice. I like it, but I just wonder since the person make the comments about the book, so it's like kind you know getting to me. So I just wonder, you know, do you have any you know specific reason that you put it there? He will explain that once after everybody has a chance to give their, um, their impressions. I see there are two people. The chat is not coming up. Okay, I have two people who had their hand raised. Um, go ahead, the first person. Would that be me, Pierre? Uh, oh, is that you, Fred, Pierre? Did you have your hand yes. raised again? Okay. Uh, yes. <laughs> But yeah, I'll. Uh, but but I, I'll let the other person speak afterwards. <laughs> um, 
was the, the other person who had their hand up? Did someone else want to speak? I, I forgot to lower my hand. I was probably okay. 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 Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I just wanted to do something brief. Uh, go, going back to the drum, also the, the other thing that actually struck me about the drum is the fact, uh, uh, just you know, very close to the uh, to the course. So to me, the, I see the drum lying down, and I think there is a kind of um, mm. some kind of symbolism there to me that it kind of mm -hmm. speaks. That yeah. So the drum is uh, kind of uh, it's as if the course is looking down on the drum. Uh, so, and, and, and that it is as if to me. So the course obviously, uh, uh, is a symbol that come to African people from Europe. And uh, the drum is, uh, uh, is very much associated with Africa. It is as mm -hmm. if, that, yeah, you know, it's as if there is kind of a looking down um, or neglecting of, uh, of, mm -hmm. of, 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 of African roots that, 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 that yeah. seems to be, uh, transpiring uh, in the work there. That's kind of how I interpreted it as well. Even though I put this together, I don't remember the name of, of the picture. So I, I was seeing the crosses taking, all, taking away from traditional African religion. And it's almost dead, like it killed it. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And I saw the book actually, where it looks like there's some blood on the book. Hmm. Yes, I kind of interpreted it as um, breaking the chains. Education breaks the chains mm. of um, imprisonment or slavery, good. enslavement. But I'm not sure about the blood <laughs> in the book. <laughs> and like, how about these spaces? There's some chains mm. going on up here too. Yes. Anybody have any thoughts about the faces looking looking down? One is looking down with a frown, looks like, and chains, and another one is kind of looking from the looking like from the side side eye. And this tree. There is so much going on in this picture. <laughs> Do we all just want to find out what, what the meaning is? Is everybody ready for that? Yeah. Now. Okay. Yes. Go ahead. Um. All, all right. Uh. Uh. Mark. Barbara, would you like to give uh, the give out the title? Oh yes. Yeah, sorry. Oh, let's see. Where's the title go? Okay. There it's, we go. Excuse me, Barbara. There's some people who actually would like to get in. Could you? Check? Oh, I'm sorry. The things are showing me. I can't see that. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't see that while people, while I'm sharing the screen. Let's see if I can do that. Um, I think I kind of, I should probably give, maybe make you. Um, Administrate. Yeah, because I can't even see that. Let me see if there's a way to do that. Oh. Uh, I might have to get out of sharing for a moment. Okay, do what you need to do. Okay. Um, okay. I need to find you now. What? <laughs> do this now. Let's see. Chat, make co host. Okay. Okay, so you're co-hosting. You can let people in. Okay, so what will I be looking for and what do I specifically so usually, Well, whatever you saw before, is usually there's something that says somebody is waiting in the waiting room, like this person, Albert, which I'm going to let in. You'll see, you know, and then you just admit when you see that. Okay. Okay? I'm watching out for the signs. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay I'm going to share my screen again. Okay, so but it's, this is where we were with the name of the picture, which was Chaos or Peace. Yes, yes. And um, thank you for these great interpretations. And everyone uh, was right on point. Everybody was right on point. No, that's, Sorry. that's 
Yes. I know. I was right on point. So uh, this is a painting that I did in 1984. 1984, right? And... Uh, when uh, this is one thing, when Barbara talked about uh, the, uh, uh, the relevancy of my work, I um, I was um, <clears throat> in this painting. I was about to. Uh, I, I wanted to talk about the effects of Western religion on African people. Talk about the effect of Western religion on African people. So what did what what what, what do they do with uh, religion? What, what what does it do? It pacifies. It pacifies. It indoctrinates. It was used as a tool. A tool for physical and mental enslavement, all right? All of these ideas are uh, basically what I wanted to convey in this work. And uh, if you guys remember what I remember when uh, when I started, I said, when I'm when I'm working, I gather different, different, different elements, different um, pictures or, uh, or, or drawings and paste them and make them uh, almost look like a collage and uh, put them on canvas. And that's basically what you have here. We have different elements that in reality, they don't, uh, you would say they don't uh, go together, but I make them work. I make them work. And this is uh, what chaos, that's that's what chaos, what, what religion does to us. Is it chaotic or is it peaceful? What is it, is it peace? Or, mm -hmm. Right? So that's basically what uh, my painting was uh, is about. And, uh, <clears throat> and as a mm matter, -hmm. Looks like Delvin has raised his hand because he has a question for you. Yes, go ahead, Delvin. Uh, just a quick question. Um, you say you you did this in eighty four. Eighty four. Yeah. Uh, were there like uh, any current events at the time that you drew uh, inspiration from, or do you typically draw inspiration from uh, like okay. things that are going on? Good question, Delvin. What I what happened is that I um. I went to a to a French Catholic school, and I grew up as I grew up Catholic, and uh, I'm still Catholic. I mean, and what happened was that uh, there are certain things that we've learned in as 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 children, and uh, later on in life we realize that uh, these things didn't really help us as a people. All right, it didn't help us as a people. On the contrary. They kept us down. They kept us down. When we look at uh, uh, um, uh, nothing, I mean, when you look at the Christ, uh, Christianity in itself, what it did uh, during uh, slavery, it didn't help us as a people. All right, they use it to uh, to to pacify us, to indoctrinate us. All right, and as a matter of fact, when you go to the next painting, it's you're gonna see that I did later on. And you'll see uh, the similar, almost. Ah, don't like give away secrets. <laughs> <laughs> um, there was the lady before she had the question about the book. Yes, the, the book. significance of it. Uh, to me, to me, the book was um, was the Bible. To me, it was the Bible. Uh, okay. It was the Bible when I was uh, when I did it. To me, that was the Bible. And uh, and you see the chain that goes through the through, through. Okay. All right, um, Leon Morton has his hand raised with a question. Yes, yeah, so since we're on the topic of the Bible that's there, and I see uh, it looks like a ball and chain, but then I see that one of the links of the chain appears broken. So I'm trying to interpret that as, is it, has something been broken to some degree or, you know, the ball and chain, something kind of holding you back? So I just kind of, you know, there's a lot of elements in here that we can kind of go over, but certainly I want to touch on the, the book a little bit more. Then you have the, the shoe there where mm. it feels like there was something in action. Uh, the oh. shoe came from somewhere like there's there's some movement. And then you got the faces looking around, too, so that we can go around and I can go on and on. But there are a lot of things here. But if we can maybe touch on a few, maybe just the faces, the shoe and, and the, the significance of the broken chain on the book. Oh, I mean, for, for the shoe, the shoe is a symbol of poverty. It's not a, it's not, a, it's not an elegant shoe. It's not a... Um, it's not a, um, a designer shoe. You can you can tell that uh, that's uh, to me it symbolizes poverty. The, uh, okay. the yeah. all the uh, the peripacies that with all the things that we've been through and uh, it's still on the wood. We still left on the wood. Even when when you look at the tree, the tree uh, the roots are there, but there are no uh, we have no um, no leaves on the tree. It's, it cuts down and and look at the uh, the guy's expression, facial expressions. It's uh, it's uh, he's not a happy person. 
Mm. Not a happy person. And the guy in the middle was, to me, that's what, that's what religion to a certain extent does to people. It puts you to sleep. Oh, that's, that sleep. was the eight four. It puts you to sleep. And, um, and it's, uh, uh, um, and, and, and also you see, look, look at the cross, look at the, look at the drum. Um, I'm from Haiti and we know, uh, people tend to, uh, to, uh, uh, consider the drum as something that, uh, that is not good as opposed to, uh, to, uh, Christianity as well, as opposed to religion. So that's why I have the drum on the floor no, at the bottom and, and the cross blinds us, make us see things, see things a certain way. That is not sometimes good for us, but uh, it's what I wanted to convey. That's basically what I wanted to convey in this painting. Did I do it? Okay. Did I do it? I don't know. Did I? Uh, I'm and I'm glad. I'm glad you uh, you guys are getting. Uh, what you're warming up, you're warming up in this painting. That's the first one. Yeah, this is fascinating. There's this, we could probably spend the whole hour and a half on this alone, but in, let's move on. Keep in mind, uh, I did it in 84. 84. 84. Uh -huh. 84. Okay, so I'm going to move on to the next one. Um, this is interesting. Anybody have, oops, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I have to go back quick, quick, quick. What do you guys see in this picture? Is that a cross or an onk? Oh, it, 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 it is a cross. Uh, you see some of the same elements. Uh -huh. Oh, it's because at the top it looked like it was an onk, you know? Mm-hmm. That is yes. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. Pierre. Uh, uh, actually, my wife Judith is with me, so she wants to do something. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> no, I was saying, yeah. Uh, there are two of us here, my me and my wife. So she was, oh, she was oh, okay. commenting. Um. Well, I don't know. So I was saying, what I can see is like there's a foot on the cross, and there's also a drum, and uh, and obviously somebody's somebody's face. Um, maybe reflecting on all of that. That's just my thought. Maybe totally different. I'm sorry. Um, I couldn't quite hear what you were. You you pointed out the drum and the face. And what does that convey to you? I said it seems to me that um, the face is reflecting on on the cross and and uh, the foot that um, seemed to me that kind of like. Um, Oh, let's see that. Um, the foot is kind of like uh, um, uh, pushing down on the course and also on the head somewhat. Mm -hmm. So um, it just might take maybe something totally different. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, <laughs> does somebody yeah. else have their hand? Oh, you also wanted to say something here? Uh, yeah, I, I just, uh, uh, I think um, the same, I, I kind of see to me uh, the very similar theme to the previous uh, uh, painting. It does seem to me, so Mark seems to be dwelling in, in, into uh, this, uh, 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 this space where you have uh, the contrast between the course and the drum is there. Uh, I see now something like, that looks like almost like uh, a papyrus, something like that, but to me, mm -hmm. still uh, uh, knowledge and information that uh, maybe they are to confuse more yeah. to than to empower. Uh, and now, and I, I guess the yeah. new thing, 
yeah, there's a bottle now. So that means so now there is there is alcohol and and other uh, that that uh, in, yeah. So that that to me, you know, uh, that's another part that actually uh, is used. Uh, that you know that uh, that probably is conveying a sense of uh, uh, trying to escape, uh, basically. Mm -hmm. So alco that alco that bottle there probably symbolizes alcohol. Kind of is doing that. Uh, the um, the food is puzzling. I guess if the, the food is now on top of the uh, standing, I guess uh, on top of the cross, uh, you know, uh, it's uh, it as if somebody is actually trying to use the cross now to try to jump off of it and and and, and get somewhere. Um, so. Uh, yeah, basically that that's what I see myself looking at it. Okay. Would it may I ask, what is this red? Is it a ball that looks like it's coming through the top of the cross? Circle, yes, it's a ball. It's a ball? Yes. Okay. Like a, a bouncing ball or just a circle? Circle. Oh, okay. Anybody else have any thoughts? Um want to so share? My my take on this, I mean, obviously, it's it is definitely the same elements, maybe some of the same symbolism. I'm gonna mm -hmm. go ahead and guess this was also done in the '80s, because um, it seems like it was, uh, you know, some of the things were used uh, in the same way. There was a shoe. I'm assuming that maybe this foot also um, stands for poverty, right? And um, maybe the placement in terms of all these elements being where the brain would be, it just shows that these are the things that are, not, that are on this man's mind. You can see the pain in his face and maybe the alcohol as a coping mechanism mm -hmm. for um, all of these things. I'm not really sure about the ball. And um, scripture could also be, you know, in terms of the Bible, you know, this could also, the paper, the scroll could be more scripture. Um, and the colors, um, you know, I stand out. It's a very, very good job. I just can't really wrap my mind around um, what their significance is. You know, it does come together well. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, thank you. Now, I, I see that three people, every time I try to click to see the name of the people, I wind up moving forward on the, on the uh, PowerPoint. So I'm just going to hope that um, you guys can work out who wants to go next. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I can go three. now. Okay. Um, so I, I'm looking at the, the placement of the cross uh, with respect to the, the face and the foot. And uh, where, the, where the face is under the cross, it sort of echoes the theme of the, the previous uh, piece mm -hmm. where uh, religion could be used to... Um, to oppress uh, the black people. Um, and if you look at where the foot is, you could also say that uh, it, it's a way to uh, lift us up and it could be a sort of foundation. So it just shows the, the duality of, mm -hmm. um, you know, how we, how we look at religion. How interesting. Okay, um, there were two other people. Who wants to go next? Pierre, were you wanting to go or not? <laughs> well, I, I guess I had one last thought. I, I did not. Uh, 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 <laughs> did, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm I, sorry. Yeah, I, I, actually, uh, so the ball to me, uh, I I see it the same way. It kind of evoked the same thing to me as the as the bottle. So the bottle. So the, the ball uh, uh, to me has symbolized all these. Uh, 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 first of all, it's, uh, uh, it's something for us to escape also, like, you know, a lot of sport that we, uh, that is actually, uh, thrown, uh, toward us in the media. And, and also the fact that, uh, uh, a lot of us, uh, 
you know, use the the way to escape poverty is actually through sports. So, uh, and, but at the same time, it's it's somewhat as, as an illusion because obviously, uh, you know, not that many of us will have the kind of talents that we, that we could use it as a vehicle to advance. Uh, so, but yeah, so in that sense, I could see to me uh, both the both the bottle and the ball. Kind of, uh, I find that as two uh, two escapist team to me. They 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 both mm. speak to escapism in our community. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Okay, great. Was there anybody else who wanted to say something or give their impressions? Um. Leon? Yeah, I guess I'll go. Yeah, I guess I'll, I'll go ahead and go. But I, I don't get the same sense of despair in this uh, image as I got in the first one. It was, it was more obvious with the chaos mm-hmm. um, in, in the previous picture, chaos and peace versus this particular one here with uh, certainly religion is, is central to it. But I, I see a bit more order here and I, a lot less dis- despair, you know, to be quite honest with mm-hmm. you, in, in, my, in my opinion. Okay. So possibly this could be more of a, a, a more positive view more positive. of religion. Yeah, that would be my thing. It's, it's, it's more ordered for me. Okay. And, it's, and the prospect is more centralized. Charles Emmanuel, um, and I think this will be the last one um, after, I take, after I say what I think it is, so we won't stay too long on one picture. But Charles Emmanuel, you have your hand raised. Just go ahead and talk. Charles Emanuel, are you there? Um, uh, I see that he has his hand raised, but I guess, I don't know if you can hear me. Anyway, what I see here, I think I do, oh, I'm sorry about the phone, that's my business phone. <laughs> um, what I'm seeing, maybe the duality somebody mentioned, I've seen this scroll here as representing wisdom, and it's aligned here with the original drum. African drum, so maybe the wisdom from Africa on this side. On this side, it's almost like religion being the opiate of the masses. I forgot who said that. Marx, maybe. Um, it can be the opiate of the masses, or the, you know, escapism through religion. Um, so, like to me, and the foot looks like it's like if somebody has your foot, their foot on you, it's like, you know shutting you down or holding you down in a way. Um, so maybe in, in that sense, religion can hold you down. But then on the, maybe they're saying religion can crush you, but you need to go back to the old wisdom, African wisdom. But, and I don't know what the ball means. <laughs> so we'll give it to, um, back to Mark to give us what you had in mind when you were doing this. So let me put the uh, name. Ah, okay. That gives us some sense. Mark, do you want to um, elaborate? All right. Uh, Can I say something? Yes, go ahead. Go ahead. No, the uh, it's a little rush. I, I, I happen to be on my other computer, so there's no visual. But it, it, to me, in looking at this picture, I, mean, I just was finally able to join you guys. Looking at this picture, is despite, to me, what it represents, despite the duality, despite the complexity of lies, whether uh, somebody try to step on you or whether you have scroll, but it looks like religion is a f- foremost on our thoughts. And that's why it keeps us going. And then, uh, so to me, that, that's what I see. The, uh, the, the, the symbol, the religious symbol being there to accommodate no matter what goes in our life. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, uh, Remember, guys, I said I spoke, uh, I said uh, the first one, I painted the first one in 1984. And this one, I painted it two years ago. Two years ago. And and I call it the Africanization of a people. Uh, To me, um, what I wanted to represent here was... um, Remember, one of the first uh, acts that the uh, Westerners have posed was to baptize and change our names. All right. They baptize us. They change, the, they change our names. And uh, they imposed, to me, they imposed Christianity upon us. And uh, uh, um, they, um, 
they had uh, 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 they made us re reject. We had to reject our own religion and started praying to a new God that uh, we could not identify it with. All right, and uh, uh, to me, this is how uh, the de-Africanization process started. And that's why wherever we go, remember when uh, when we look at pictures of Christopher Columbus, uh, the first thing that he he, uh, he implanted uh, was uh, Oak Frost. Of course, that's the beginning of Christianity. So uh, to me, that uh, these are all the things that are that were going to our mind. And uh, and one other thing that I wanna I I, I wanted to, I want to uh, to mention is the fact that uh, I. Um, I love uh, surrealism because uh, surrealism, one thing that it, it allows you to do is to ju juxtapose uh, form, whatever you want to juxtapose. And uh, you don't have to worry too much about composition, space, so on and so forth. You create your own space. And that's uh, what you see in my work. And uh, sometimes that's why you see all those just juxtapositions. And, and lately I've been using more colors as opposed to, the first painting was a little bit monochromatic, mm -hmm. was a little bit monochromatic, and uh, it it looked more uh, a little bit uh, sad, a little bit sad. But uh, this one looks happier because of the colors. But as my but the message to me, it's still the same. I, I haven't deviated from my thought process. It's still going on, and I'm finding new ways of portraying, portraying what I, what, I want, what I want to portray. And I have to tell you, Barbara, this is the first time I'm doing that because usually people who know me, they know I don't talk about my art. I don't discuss my art. I uh, This is a new uh, forum for me and um, I'm appreciating mm -hmm. it because most of the time I uh, listen to people. I uh, let them get, I let them interpret the work and and uh, I'm unhappy. I'm happy whatever they get, but uh, now I'm forced to talk about it, man, which is good. <laughs> it's good. And we're among friends. We can talk, you know. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> well, it's good to do something new. Okay, I'm going to move on to the next picture. You you have so much going on in the picture that we could always stay <laughs> for <laughs> the whole... Yeah, I'm about to say, we, we can stay right there. We were going to talk about the bottle a little bit, but I guess uh, the comments about the bottle, was that about uh, people oh, drinking oh, and... Oh yes, yes. To talk you, you, Leon, Leon. That's Leon. Leon, you, you, uh, Leon and Bryce and Bryce. You, you, uh, you, you touch upon it. You know, we, you, you touch upon this, uh, the bottle. Basically, we, um, we, we drank, we drank, we, we drank to uh, forget things. Mm -hmm. but after, after when we, uh, when we come sober, the, uh, the problems still are still there. They, they don't, they don't go away. They don't mm -hmm. go. To escapism. Okay. Yes. Okay. Well, people are coming in. Uh, one after the other. Okay, here's another one here. This is very interesting. And like, there's less going on, so maybe we can focus. Um, so what, does anybody have any thoughts about what this conveys to them? Yeah, for me, I would say I, I see life and death. And, you know, I look at the... Uh, I don't know if the tears could be maybe rain or is that tears of sadness, but overall, you know, my initial impression of this is uh, some sort of a statement on, on the egg being life and the, and the tree with, with no uh, uh, foliage on it representing death or, or no life in some sort of way. Mm, okay. Um, anyone else? Sorry, I'm writing, I'm writing a few things. I hope you don't mind. No, no problem. Anybody else want to raise their hand and say what maybe this, like this, like um, Mark said, there's no right or wrong answer. So whatever it is that um, you are, I'm looking in the chat here. My chat doesn't. Okay, Pierre, go ahead. Uh, so, do this. Uh, so I see um, fertility to the eggs. To the eggs, to um, the water, where the uh, so it's kind of like a combination of hope and despair. 
um, where I see fertility with uh, with the egg and the water or tears um, that is bringing some grass um, for, uh, coming out of the ground. I also, uh, so um, I also see a broken tree with no, no branches, no leaves, and tears uh, in a face um, that is cow stern. So it's kind of like a combination okay. of, uh, of hope and uh, despair. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. I just want, oh, Pierre, did you want to speak as well? Yeah, I wanted to say quickly that I, I, I kind of see the same thing, the, the egg, uh, to be, uh, it is as if there is, uh, uh, it's saying that uh, uh, the, uh, the, our circumstances is pretty dire with the tree, for instance, almost barren, uh, but then there is still, uh, still, uh, a lot of hope to me and a lot of fight in us with that egg. I find that, you know, that means that the, uh, there is uh, um, a lot of uh, 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 things that can germinate and, 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 and provide a, a better future. Uh, the, I'm very, I'm, I'm, I'm struck by the, uh, by the tears, the tears are so big, and it's as if, uh, like Judith, my wife said, <laughs> it's as if the tears are so big that could actually, uh, 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 uh kind of, uh, really, uh, 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 make, make the soil fertile by <laughs> providing water, you know, for the, uh, for the, mm -hmm. uh, 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 for the, for the soil, basically. But yeah, but that, that's, um, uh, so my thought is kind of very similar to, uh, to, to Judith, my wife. Okay, thank you. I'm going mm -hmm. to read like a couple of um, uh, comments that were in the chat because I have been. Um, Valerie Ledlin, Ledlin uh, says there is a sadness of new life being brought into a desolate dead world. And Nat Natasha Alexandra is misery dry life. I'm not sure what that means. Natasha, do you want to elaborate on that? Oh, actually, <laughs> actually, I just, it was, it was, it's a great imagination for Mark Wenger. So I have another thought. So seeing the egg, so meaning like even though people are in misery, they're still making kids. So that's probably why he's taking. So I, I don't know. I don't know. So it's dry, the tears, you know, the egg, and somebody looks sad and, you know, miserable. So that's probably the first thought. But I think he meant like with the egg, even though there's still misery, there's still dry life, and then people still making, you know, kids are still being born. So I don't know. Okay. Mark Gaston has his name and raised. Mark yeah, so Gaston Jr. I I, yeah. I saw it almost as a revolving door, like there's stages, there's birth, and then um, there's, you know, a life of oppression and, you know, the quality of life is seen in the tree because even though the tree is alive, it's, you know, the branches are dead. There's not much mm -hmm. leaves on it for growth. So mm -hmm. I think it just speaks on the, you know, evolving door of oppression. Mm -hmm. mm. um, yes, it seems that in the last, in the first picture, I think the tree with no branches on it, Mark did say that represent, it was life, but it wasn't growth. The, 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 the life of the tree had been impacted and I think Maybe, in my opinion, maybe this child or person is um, grieving for the loss of African um, ways, I think, maybe. And the egg of you know, new life, life in a new place, there is always still hope. It's kind of, but then there's also, like, like people said, this death, life and death kind of thing that death of an old way of life and the birth of a new way. But there, there's always grieving 
for that as well. Does anybody else want to yes. share? Yes. Marshall. Hi. Hello. Well, can you uh, tell me what's the uh, meaning of the egg? Oh, I will. Uh, I will tell you what. What? What? What is? What is? What does it mean to you? I'm. I'm trying to figure it out because I see a child, a, a sad child crying, and there's an egg. There's an egg also, and I don't know the meaning of the eggs. Can you elaborate on that for me? Yes, I will. Know. Uh, well, of course, definitely. Um, uh, uh, Barbara, would you would you would you mind putting the uh, the title? Oh up? yes, sorry, I keep forgetting about the title. Uh, okay, the blessings of the earth. Huh. You guys see the title? Yeah, do you see it? Uh, hold on a second. Okay. Oh, the blessing. Okay. Okay. Okay, I got it. All right. Um, uh, uh, to me. To me, a child is always a bundle of joy. All right, it evokes it evokes life. Uh, a child is, uh, it evokes life. It is uh, the future. It is uh, it is hope. But it is always uh, a blessing to the earth. That means life goes on. And mm -hmm. uh, and what you see in my painting, even what you think, what you think. I mean, there are tears, but there are tears of uh, despair. There are tears of joy. All right, they are tears of joy. It's that like, no matter what, we will, uh, we will all, we will overcome. We'll overcome. Mm. They will the life. We will always, as a people, we strong. We'll always overcome all the challenges. Life will always goes on. There is always hope. Always hope. In uh, there's always hope. There's always a future to uh, 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 when we look at our children, the children of our children. Uh, there's always hope and. Uh, that's basically what I uh, I want to convey in this painting, and as you can see, the um, the uh, what you call it, um, the colors of are, uh, are not as um, some people may think that my previous colors, some of them were uh, the first painting was sad, a little bit sad, but these colors I think they're beautiful, they're nice. I uh, mm. I, think, uh, I see a lot of joy, a lot of hope in this painting. Okay. Um, Harold LaRoche has had pretty much had it down pat. He said, exactly. Um, in the chat, while we may be living in a desolate world, hope is still present. Yes, yes, yes. You guys are great. You guys are awesome. Marshall, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the egg is, uh, is uh, a symbol of, uh, of life. It's life. Uh, uh -huh. uh, symbol of life. Okay. That's fair enough. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. We move on to the next one. Uh, Oh, oh, this is, I, for, for a minute, I thought it was the first one. This is the second, this is one with the same colors. Did you do this in 84? Yes, no, no. yes same, same, same period. Okay. Same period. Okay, this one has a lot in it. So anybody want to uh, share their impressions? Anybody at all? Well, you know, central to this picture, which is interesting, the, I mean, it pops up at first. What I see is a lot of misery, mm. yep. people suffering. But yet religion remained within the central aspect of uh, this. Now, the interesting thing uh, is that the, the, lay, the person with the mask I don't know if it would present the Muslim aspect of religion, which is very interesting in looking at you know what's behind it. But yet, within that misery, within with blood coming out of the pipe, uh, but yet you still see that one child walking within all that misery. So it kind of reminds you, and, and, and when you see the uh, certain picture of Somalia, you see all that the people dying and everything is going on. Out, yet this child is still walking around uh, within that. Uh, mm. Desperate world that's going on around around her. Mm. Very interesting. Anyone else? Yes, there's some grass. 
<laughs> life. There's always life. Always yeah. life. Mm-hmm. There's a cross in the foot. It's like it's a cross of foundation. It looks like foundation. Um. Oh yeah. There's also a foot. It it also looks like the hand is white with yes. a tobacco product in it. So it makes me think that the misery of the enslaved is allows the pleasure of the white who person who enjoys the tobacco and owns the tobacco farm. And yet it is the price of blood there. Uh, is that tobacco in the background? Um, but the right pipe. by the pipe. The pipe. I'm, I'm wondering. Know, maybe that's tobacco growing. I don't know what it looks like. <laughs> yeah, but it looks something like that. I think maybe it is. I didn't know if this would be tobacco or drugs. <laughs> a guy yeah, I, I interpreted it as tobacco as well. The, the same impression. You know, when I look at the hand of the oppressor, when I look at the, uh, looks like they're in a in a, in a suit. Um, from looking at the sleeve, and it uh-huh. looks like an overcoat or a jacket. It looks like business. The business. The tobacco business with, with blood on its hands. And uh, dirty, and, and, dirty hands. Yeah. Yep. Your hands are dirty. Yeah. But as I remember, while it may, as, again, that's my interpretation, look at tobacco, but I look at it more as the blood of the enslaved that's being, uh, um, uh, that they're being surmised to. So it may, to me, look more about the blood of what's going on in the background and the misery. Mm. Um. Um, I see it as like um, you see the crust is coming from like you know there's a foot there's a foot there and the crust is coming out from the foot and then you see all the faces back there. I see it as like um, you know the suffering from all of our ancestors is like the foundation where you know everything starts from for us like you know our religion you know everything we're fighting for today. I feel like mm-hmm. the foot and the crust represent the foundation for that and the faces. You know, and the faces back they represent like the suffering of us, of our slaves, of our ancestors and stuff. Mm-hmm. And then, as you see the guy, I don't know if the guy's stuck into the tree or walking by the tree, but if he's stuck into the tree, he's definitely, you know, probably having a conversation with, you know, with the people that has passed away, you know, and he's pretty mm-hmm. much praying or, you know, worshiping the tree. That's how I see it. Yeah, the tree is dead, it looks like. Yeah, correct. So yeah. yeah, I kind of see the road that the person's walking on. It looks like they have different ways that they can go. Maybe interpreting that as different paths that, that one could take. Hmm. Mm. This is such an interesting picture. Now, over here by the woman at the far uh, uh, left, what is that? A tree? Yes, it is Coming a tree. Up? It is also another tree. Okay, another a dead tree. And these are little branches, little twigs by her hair, top of her hair? Yes. Okay. Hmm. So maybe, okay, we're talking about tobacco. I guess it's a form of drugs, but maybe another sense of escapism and making you be quiet. You know, she's silent. You know, and just go ahead and, and engage in some escapism. Um, so I, it looks, I'm not sure if this man is asleep or, and so in, if, if he's asleep, then it makes think maybe this tobacco keeps you kind of like uh, dazed. Or if he's dead or is he high? <laughs> hmm. Hmm. But I think I'm going with him being um, asleep. Okay. Okay. Any other thoughts? Anybody let me check the chat because the chat is not showing up the way it normally does. Come now, on. this was done, this um, uh, picture was done before COVID, correct? 1984. Okay. All right. Yes. You signed it on the first. Yes. I said 84. <laughs> See, that's yes. it. 84. <laughs> It was only 84, and uh, that was the same same time that I did the first one, Chaos of Peace. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yes. 
Okay, so uh, are we ready to have the reveal? Or yeah. the people, someone else want to say something? Uh, okay. Bloody pipe. Okay, but okay, what does that mean? Okay, I, I, this painting, uh, 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 it addresses uh, 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 an issue, the issue of those uh, who uh, works and earn very low wages in general, and yet bring enormous wealth to all the segment of society. That's basically what this painting was, is about. People working hard, making low wages, and somebody else is benefiting from it. And where did that start? So this guy, the business owner, white person has blood on his hands and dirty, dirty hands and blood on his hands. He's the, he's yeah. the bad guy, <laughs> in a lack of a better word. The but, one who's. But also remember, remember um, these people, I mean, our ancestors, uh, well, we, in history, I mean, I'm a student of history. Remember, he's, in history, we learned that they went to uh, get our ancestors from Africa so they could come and work the land for free. We worked for free, the work, work the land for free, and who benefited? Who benefited from this work? Who benefited from this work? Mm -hmm. All right? And uh, I, religion was the central of this traffic. It was there. They were part of it. Their hands are in there. Western religion, the hands are in there, and that's part of their hands also. It's not just one hand. It's uh, a lot of hands. Mm. That's a lot of hands. And... Um, it definitely that, looks like desolation going on, though. Yes, that's that's what I wanted to portray in this painting, and that was um, and that was um, that's another thing. That's another thing. When I said the relevances of of the work, that's what Barbara touched when she when Barbara touched that. I was um, very very happy because it I did it in eighty eighty four, and uh, even when we look at it right now, it's um, basically the same things are still happening. They might happen at a different level, but they're still happening. Even if they don't happen in the United States, they happen somewhere in the world. They happen all over the world. That happens here in the United States. <laughs> yes, I know. It's like capitalism. It still happens. <laughs> I didn't want to say it, but thank you for saying it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's one other thing I saw, again, I've, like I said, central to the cross, which is a religion, but also that's what I referred to as this person with the veil, the Muslim uh, religion. In other words, there was something else going on that keep people hope. It wasn't necessarily the Catholic mm. bro, uh, uh, cross that we see as a symbol, but also their own religion keeping them going. True. 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 Okay. You guys are doing very well. I'm, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, two people raised their hand. These are going to be, the, or did they speak already? I just raised my hand. Mm hmm I just uh, wanted to ask Marco, how does the title relate to the um, the painting, or does it relate, or is it supposed to? Oh, uh, what do you mean? How does it relate to the painting? Well, uh, the the title "Bloody Pipe." Uh, yes. I I just want to help uh, figuring out how it uh, relates to, to the, the painting. The painting, yeah. I think I think that's uh, the title. I think the one of that's one of my most obvious title. Uh, we have a pipe. But I think I understand what he's saying. It's like you identify you you identify the pipe as the major item in the painting. Yes. Uh, as opposed to like the other other things that are going on. Okay. So what's in the pipe that is everything? I mean, what's in the pipe is the result of everything that is going around here. Ooh. I, I okay, I get it. You just had to give me some time to catch up. Sorry. <laughs> okay. That's okay. You Does someone else have their hand up before we move on? Mm -hmm. uh, Pierre or Mrs. Bray? Yeah, uh, yeah. I wanted, I wanted to say quickly to me, to me, uh, the, the the pipe uh, uh, definitely jumped at me uh, in the painting. And all of everything that is there, the pipe to me is very sensual in the sense that, uh, at, at least in my mind. Uh, a pipe is usually uh, associated with 
with prosperity. Somebody was, was like, you know, was not smoking a cigarette, they were smoking a pipe, so that somebody who pretty much has arrived, who is like at, at, at a different level of, uh, of, of, of comfort and prosperity. And, 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 and to me, I, I see here that uh, somebody definitely who uh, has uh, some level of, of, of prosperity, uh, but based on that misery that, uh, that, that the rest of the pending is, is, uh, is trying to display. So, so, yeah, so that's why to me the, the, um, the pipe is so uh, kind of jump, just jump at me. In the, okay. In the, mm. Great, great. So I'm going to move us along a little more quickly. Maybe we might not get to everybody's comments because we want to get to the after eight. So we want to get to more, uh, as many pictures as we can. Now, this should be interesting. <laughs> the, this is one whole painting or two paintings put together. Two paintings. That's uh, that's a diptych. Two paintings and two two separate canvases, and they are joined by the. Uh... What is that join joining them? By some rods, small rods. Oh. Okay. Oh wow. Any thoughts going on here? I'm seeing, well, since no one else is saying anything. Um, I, see, I see ecstasy. You see ecstasy? Yeah. I'm seeing the opposite, but uh, Mark, oh, Mark Gaston? Yeah, so um, I think earlier he spoke on the egg being, you know, maybe a symbol of like hope in the future. And this time around, you can see there's blood and the egg is being uh, destroyed in a way. And I'm guessing media has some type of influence on why that's happening. So I haven't made a full association with the bottom half. Mm. Yeah, I didn't even that. notice that in the back. Is that a computer or a TV? It probably looks like a computer. That's, that's an old, old fashioned TV. Oh, old fashioned TV. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh, we forget that we forget about them already, huh? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that screen. That's flat screen. <laughs> it's an old painting. Yeah, because it, uh, other than that, TV. Oh, if you look on. at the face, look at the face itself. The face looks to me like agony. Doesn't look Anguish. like agony to me. No, you think it's over? Look here at with that, the, look the, at that the, half smile. Really. Like with the future of the death of of the, of, the, of of new life, I was almost thinking abortion, but <laughs> um, but maybe the media the media perspective is is killing our youth, maybe, and that's an agony to me. I, it looks like agony, but maybe maybe I've got it all wrong. When was this painting done, Mark? What? Uh, this painting was on 92, 93. Okay. Because mm. looking at it reminds me when you go to the opera and you see those uh, masks being worn. And, and I don't know if it's the, the hidden vision of uh, uh, the reality of uh, the, the, the television uh, being, being uh, going away or uh, the unmasking of uh, what's going on at this time of uh, an hour and that time of that period of time in our life. Mm. Okay, I'm reading in the chat from Barbara Bornstein um, asking if that's a pacifier coming out of the TV. I see bliss. Mm. So is that a pacifier? I don't know if it is, but that's what I saw when I first looked at it. Okay. And it, it looks to me like this person is um, being pacified by the garbage that comes out of the TV. Perfect. It could be. Yeah. 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 I, I, I had the same kind of a, a very similar uh, reaction. I was, I'm looking at the face. Uh, 
uh, like uh, somebody has mentioned, there's a sense of ecstasy. Somebody is pacified, uh, but I'm puzzled by the fact that she has her eyes closed. So it is as if to me, you're saying that, yeah, you know, she's watching TV, but she's really, <laughs> she's really sleeping uh, in a way. Uh, so the TV is putting her to sleep. Uh, that uh, that seems to say to me. Uh, so in that sense, yes, yeah, so the, t- the, the TV is actually uh, hmm. lulling her <laughs> to, to forget her, her life sweet. kind of thing. Yeah. Wow. So that's interesting. I think I'm the only one that sees a grimace or, or pain. So yeah. maybe maybe she's being lulled. Oh, I'm sorry. Is somebody talking? But what, what makes you say she instead of he? Well, I, I don't know. It looks like a woman to me. <laughs> maybe it's a he. Yeah, the, the, yeah, I guess the reason why I, I, I thought of a she at first is because I guess of the of the lipstick or something that could like that looks yeah. like lipstick. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Mm-hmm. Yes. So please enlighten us. <laughs> uh, so let me show the title. Oh, damn it. Sorry. Ah, pacificator. Yes, 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 yes. Media, uh, to me, what I was, uh, uh, yes, uh, yeah, Barbara, it's like Barbara, and most of you were right on point, right on point. Uh, to me, the TV, uh, that's exactly what I wanted to portray, put, put portray the media, especially the TV. It's a tool, uh, it is a tool for to inform. It also, it, it, to me, it's also a tool to control. All right? It is, uh, it is a powerful device. Oh, I heard, uh, Okay, and um, that can now uh, imprison. I uh, it, it, it imprison one's mind, and I uh, it uh, it can also make people very passive and uh, unproductive uh, by sitting and absorbing all day long. And uh, so that's this is, a pacifier. It is a pacifier. Yes, yes. Basically, that's uh-huh. what it does. It pacifies us. That's all it does. And. Um, Remember the the egg that Mark Mark was touching on the egg uh, the TV what it does it uh, it kills uh, it kills our brain it kills us it, to a certain extent it um, it stops us from being as productive as we should or what we could be. And so yeah, you put the kids in front of the TV. That's where it starts, right? And then yes. somebody is there's some um, background background noise background. or something. Yeah. I don't know where it's coming from. Okay, you guys had it. Yeah, you guys had it right. Very nice. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Uh, so, sorry, I have, I have a final question. Sorry. Yes, sir. Um, I'm wondering um, if you were doing this painting now, what would you identify as a, as a, as like comparable to the TV? Like maybe when you did this in 1992. 90, Mm-hmm. Oh, right now we see kids with uh, uh, electronic devices. I mean, we have different. I mean, it will, we have all type of devices. The kids, uh, the, the telephone. It's one of it's one uh, one device that we we can uh, we can identify it with instead of a, of a TV because uh, from our phone we can get whatever we need to get. Uh, we watch TV on our phone. We play games in our phone. We play. We do everything on our phone. So. Uh, now the phone will replace the TV. I mean, as a device, but it's always it's still the same. Um, this it's still the same. The same. The same philosophy is the same. The same thing. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, what do you think, Omar? You, you, Omar, you think it's uh, what do you think? Yeah, because I'm 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 actually joining this and and I'm using my phone to join this and I. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> nothing, nothing personal, Omar. <laughs> <laughs> like how many times I like touch my phone on a given day and and it's really you know kind of very symbolic to what this thing is doing here. It makes me feel good, um, and and make me forget about some things that I that I should probably focus on. Yes, we all go through that. I'm telling you, that's a problem. We all go through that now. <laughs> okay, let's um, Although, uh, it, it, seems, it seems to me, so you mentioned, Mark, that you did that piece in the 1990s. So I guess the way, and I thought that was a great question, uh, asking about, you know, uh, I guess there are new threats and uh, there obviously there's social media. There is a lot of other uh, challenging things, I think, with the media. 
But still, it seems to me that there is also a lot of quality TV uh, nowadays that, that were not available in the 1990s. I mean, there is so much diversity and uh, with all of these different uh, streaming services, you could go, you could be on YouTube for instance, and watch and watch TV and and be educated about all kind of things all day. Uh, yeah. So so the, so there so there so there, there is a different mix now. But 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 uh, the but probably you could still probably do a very similar painting with other threats that media uh, that me, media post to us that is slightly different than I think uh, yeah. in the 1990s. Yeah, I agree. I agree hundred percent because there's always a good and the bad side in uh, in everything. But uh, sometimes we tend to uh, gear towards the bad, and uh, because the bad tends tend to affect us more mm -hmm. sometimes than okay. the good. Yeah. And then move on. Oh, we have the precipitator. Now this one. This one has me very confused. But what do what what impressions do you get with this? Land the train? tree with a gap in it. Yeah, what stands out to me more is, is the noose that's on the tree versus the tree with the gap. <laughs> right, Leon. Yeah. What did you say? Our, I couldn't hear you. Uh, there's a noose on the tree. There's a noose, definitely, yes. You know, have, having read a few books recently, it, to me, it looks like the person at the forefront looking back at the, what he, uh, the way he escaped, what his four, some of his forefathers have gone through. Mm. That he, he was able to migrate somewhere else, and now he, looking back at, he could have been lynched, he could have been hanged. And looking mm. back at that, at that history. Ah, so maybe that's what the gaps in the tree. There's like gaps in uh, your knowledge about your past or family tree or something. When I think of a tree, I think of a tree of life. And this is the noose. Right? Cut, cut short. Yeah. That string of life. That's the tree of death. Hmm. But yeah, the life is cut short, or you know, the tree is cut. I see. I see it as like you know, as the tree is like, you know, I, I, the, I see the tree as like a success. And you like, you know, as you're climbing the tree, that you know, there's there's challenges. That's, that's why you see the gap. And then you know, the challenges are so hard. As you can see, there's a hanging. There's a there's like a cord. You know. Just in case, like, you know, things are not going the way you want it, you know, there is a way out for you, which which might be suicide. I don't know if that's what it means. You know, the challenges might be so tough that, you know, you might want to give up and just, you know, just let just, just let yourself hang. But as you're climbing the tree, there's, like, challenging, there's gap, and, you know, it's harder for you to reach the top. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to show that because we're running out of time, I want to show a few more pictures. Um, the title is... Is it showing? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Back, 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 back. I couldn't see it because I have stuff on the bottom here. What is the title? Because I can't see it. I can't see it. Gina 6, 2006 in memoriam. Does it Gina? show? Is it showing? Yes. Yes. Okay. Gina 6, 2006 in memoriam. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if you guys remember what happened in Gina in Louisiana. Gina? That's a town in Louisiana and... Um, there were a, um, I think there was a, um, I don't know, the high school. That was at a high school. And um, there was a tree where the white students used to sit. And one day, one black student went and sat there. And the next day, they had three nooses hanging. And uh, the media was alerted. And uh, the uh, school administrator, school authority cut down the tree where the nooses were hung. Oh. When you look at the painting, this is exactly what I, um, that's the reason why I did this painting. And uh, to me, uh, when, uh, when they cut down the tree where the nooses were hung, they did not, the, uh, uh, 
the fundamentals, they, they, haven't, they have not unrooted the racism, the racism that was there. And uh, 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 it remains in the forefront. And, uh, 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 and uh, mm. as a society, we, uh, we must work together to unwood that evil. To me, that's, uh, that's uh, I, I, when you look at the tree, you see the trees cut. Mm -hmm. they, cut they cut the tree down. And uh, although they cut the tree, to me, the tree the noose is still there. The noose is still there. The uh, roots of racism are still there. They, they, they haven't unrooted racism. And look at us now in 2020, 2021, and we're still having the same problem. Mm. That's, uh, that's the reason why I, uh, I, I, left, I left a gap uh -huh. uh, between the, between the, between the uh, I left a gap to show you, although they cut the tree symbolically, but the roots uh, of racism are still there. Wow. Oh, can I just say real quick, that was a great imagination. I thought it was like somebody want to commit suicide and change his mind, so he got second thoughts. So oh, that's a good well, one, Mark. <laughs> yes, because what happened is that uh, there's a history, the noose in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in American history is uh, something very, really, really negative. So, yes, uh, uh, yes that's why I, uh, mm -hmm. yes, yes, that's why I have it. Yeah. Okay, I think the next one's going to be our last one, even though it might be a few more. Um, and this is the famous one that was on the at, on the um, flyer. So, what are folks seeing here? It's a drawing, by the way. It's a drawing. Yeah, charcoal. Yes, yeah, charcoal. Mm -hmm. uh, my, my first impression is it's a black man with a target on his back. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Leon, right on, right on point. You know what, symbolically though too, it's not the whole man. It's like these people who do this don't see him as a full, fully human because his head's cut off and his legs are cut off. He's a part, like, like three, quart, three fifths of a man or something. People who put this um, target on your back, they don't see him as really human or fully human. Yes. Uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting because when it, when it says that the target on his back, I was looking, I was thinking of more uh, a black man trying to get to his its target, to his target, to where he wants to go, to his goal. Hmm. I'll, I'll see it as more, you know, as the black man is the target, you know, because, you know, he's standing in front of the target. So, you know, it, 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 the target is not on his back. He's just, he's just the target, period. Hmm. You know, he's just a walking target. And I think, um, yeah, to follow up with that, I think, especially the fact that he has no face, just a black man in general who is a target. Yeah. Okay, guys. Um, we want a, a few more minutes to a few minutes to close because I think Mark has a nice announcement that they'd like to make. Um, this is pretty much the target practice. Yes, number sorry. one, which and speaks for itself in a way. And then the, very quickly, the next one, which is like. The poor little kids have this, you know, target practice number two. Yes, one and two, because uh, the first one was, uh, as um, uh, as you you guys said, uh, black men have uh, we uh, always been uh, always been seen as target by the police and by society. And later on, later on, uh, uh, I came to realize that even children. Children weren't spared. You know, children of color were not exempt from were not exempt from police brutality. They also uh, they also become a target at an early age of their lives. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's the reason I did this. Too. I did this. Too. I did the first one, and then I did this one as a second one. You know what? I think it's also like he's wearing the hat. He looks a little older than his probably young age, and, and studies have shown that people often see black children as older than they actually are. Yes. You know? Yes, they do. And then and more threatening as well. Yeah. Okay, so this is, you know, we're going to stop here. We saw quite a few of them, and I hope you everybody enjoyed this exercise. As you said, there's no wrong answer, but there's a lot of relevance here. I did record this, and I'm hoping, I don't see that. Oh, I'm hoping that, you know, I can, I can share that when it's done. Let me very quickly look in the chat. I see there are three. Uh, 
I'm sorry, I have two questions before you go. It's really important. Like, I want to know, uh, do the, uh, Mark, as an artist, do you take, you know, what comes to mind to name your, your paintings? And then the second question, can you tell a character of a painter based on his work? Can I tell? What was no, anybody, a not you. It's, you know, can I just tell based on what you do, your work? I could say, oh, Mark is it's such and such. So can I tell your character from that? And then what comes to your mind to name your painting? Because mm. okay. they seem hard. They don't they don't match up. You know, it's like the the pipe. I didn't get to ask my question. The pipe, bloody. Uh, it's when you answer it that I realized that that's probably uh, uh, close to tobacco. That tobacco been killing people. That's probably what's in mind. I don't know. Because I didn't see the point on the pipe. I don't you know what the pipe, you know, we're presenting on the picture. But when you mention the pipe, you know, is the killer, then I realize, okay, that's probably, you know, a factor. You know, you can always on tobacco, cancer, things like that. So, uh, the first thing I want to tell, um, I don't know if I understand your question very well. I'm going to try my best. Number one, um. You can always tell an artist by uh, by his work. I don't know if that's what you really yeah. want. Yeah, you can always tell an artist by his work. Once you you familiarize yourself with the artist, you can tell. Once you see the work, I know there are certain people. Once they see my work, they know. They say this, this is a Mark Gaston. This is a Mark Gaston. You have to you, uh, you have to understand. Uh, you have to learn my uh, my language, my vocabulary. My uh, you see. Once you get used to it, you'll uh, you'll be able to tell. This is when you walk in. They say this is a Mark Gaston. That's number one. Number two, um, painting. Great thing. One great thing I said at the beginning about painting. There's no wrong or there's no wrong or right answer. It it has to do with uh, your experience as a person and how you can relate that experience to the piece that you're looking at. That's there's. It should be a communication between you and the artwork. I mean, personally, I have pieces that I've done and that I hated. I put them away, never look at them again. <laughs> All right, but I have pieces that I love. I I, I love them. Um, titles, titles. Sometimes uh, uh, so titles are obvious. Sometimes sometimes they are not. And um, I don't. It's not. Uh, I don't take. I don't take um, a long time to title or to name my paintings. Sometimes some of my paintings are untitled. To me, the title sometimes is not that relevant. That's not, it's not, it's not that important. For the same reason, my name, my name on the painting is not that important. Uh, uh, the most important thing for me is the work. You look at the work, you interact with the work, you uh, you experience the work, and then you find out it's a Mark Gaston, or it's a Jean Dominique, or it's a, you know, so on and so forth. And uh, I don't know if I've answered your question. Yeah, definitely. Yes, you, you know, you did. I did. Yes, oh. you did. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we just want to show, make sure we show this that Mark has a, um, an exhibit, a live exhibit at Valley Arts in Orange, and it's all brand new works, works that you haven't seen, and I don't think they're on the website either. I'm not sure, um, but so that you see, they're Fridays and Saturdays and Sundays. So um, the Valley Arts, Arts is at 400 South Jefferson Street in Orange. Um, yes. And um, Fridays from 12 to 6, and Saturdays and Sundays from 2 to 6. So I hope you guys go down. The artwork, the artwork is for sale as well, if you're interested in it, um, in purchasing anything. Or I guess you can talk to Mark for anything if you, I, I can't speak for him, but if you wanted to. Um, I'm trying to figure out, okay. Screen is paused. I want to go back to his website. Um, sorry about that. <laughs> oh, come on. I'm going to just leave you with his, with this website if you want to get in touch with him. Um, thank you so much, Mark, for participating in this. I know this was rather new for you, but I hope you enjoyed it as much as we all did. Oh, thank you to everyone. Yes. Everyone thank you. Coming, and it was a great experience for me. And uh, uh, thank you, Barbara, for having me. Hopefully, we'll do it again. And hopefully, um, I'll see everyone uh, maybe in person or um, whichever way we do it. Thank you. And 
I need to hang a mug gusto in my living room. I have a space for it. <laughs> well, go to the exhibit um, tomorrow, Friday. Go to the exhibit. It, um, Mark, Mark, you should say for the right price. For the right price. <laughs> hey, this is an original work of art. It's worth paying for it. It's an investment. One of these days, it's going to be worth millions of dollars because Mark Aslan's going to be famous. <laughs> And we had at the at the highest number we had forty one people, so thank that was wonderful. That was good. So thank goodbye, you. everybody, and thank you so much for coming. Yes, thank you. I enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. Good night. Good, good night. night. Good bye night. bye. Thank you. Take care, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Good night. Good night. Okay. <laughs> Trying to end. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs> with the recording. Okay, um, now, okay, I'm going to introduce our wonderful local artist, Mark Antoine Gaston. Um, before I do, I would suggest everybody um, to put, well, after I finish reading this, everyone should put their, um, um, I don't know what you call it, your view on speaker view because I'm, we're going to be sharing a PowerPoint and you want to see it as large as possible. Okay, you don't want to see a little tiny little picture. Okay, so I'm going to introduce Mark Gaston, who was born in Port au Prince, Haiti on July 17, 1960. He was the youngest of a family of four. He immigrated to the United States in 1980 and attended Mason Gross. School of the Arts at Rutgers University in New Brunswick, where he earned a Bachelor of Fine Arts, Fine Arts in 1985 and a Master's of Fine Arts in 1987. Um, as a graduate student, he was awarded a teaching assistantship and he taught photography for two years, which is another of his many skills. Mark is privileged, was privileged to study under some prominent artists such as Leon Golub, Melvin Edwards, and Emma Amos. Mark's work has been shown in New York, New Jersey, California, Georgia, and Haiti. And he's currently an art instructor in the state of New Jersey. Um, Mark says that um, art is the safest venue to convey his thoughts and feelings without any fear or reservation. And his role as an artist is to visually challenge his viewers and engage them in civil discourse that goes beyond the visual. And his work echoes his surroundings in many ways. So without further ado, I'm going to let Mark um, just tell you a little bit about his artwork and then we'll get on with the program. Again, I suggest that you put your, um, up in the, up, up, does everybody know how to, um, change their view to speaker view. If anybody needs help up in the left in the um, top right hand corner, there's uh, nine boxes you can click on. When you click on that, it says speaker view at the very top. You can click on that and you should just see whoever is speaking, taking over your whole screen. Okay, Mark. Good evening, everyone. 